Hello, writers. I'm Renee Latulipe with the Lyrical Language Lab, and we're back for another episode of Peak and Critique. All right, I'm ready to go. This week I'm doing rhyming picture book samples. This one is sent in by Cindy Williams Schraubin, and it's called Bro vs. Peas, How to Feed Baby. So let's give it a quick read. Caution, this gig wasn't meant for the weak. It calls for great bravery and expert technique. My quick, sneaky style will make lunchtime a breeze. Set on your mark, this is Bro vs. Peas. The cargo is loaded, it's zip, zoom, and race. I'm speeding green peas to that squeaky clean face. With pedal to metal, I plead open, please. But roadblocks pop up, and round one goes to peas. All aboard, cho-cho train, zip, zoom, woo-woo. The car contains oodles of ick sticky goo. The trip is all twisty and jiggly, oh no. I keep it on track, and round two goes to bro. A speedboat is mega fast. Zip, zoom, and splash. I'm aiming beneath that ish, squishy green stash. The baby thwacks back with Tai Chi expertise. She won't open up, and round three goes to peas. <laughs> I think this is a really cool premise. I think you're going to have a lot of fun developing all the different situations that can come out with this, as I can see you've already begun doing. Um... Cindy included a pitch about brother facing off with baby at mealtime. One curve after another proves what a slippery slope feeding the baby can be. As their journey rolls along, we find out who is really in the driver's seat. So uh, I think your opening has certainly um, met what is promised in your pitch. So that's always good. And I did not stop to read your art notes, but I'm, I will do so as we go back through. All right. Let's start at the beginning with some meter. All right, so let's see what we've got here. It sounded pretty good throughout, but let's just take a quick look. Caution, this gig wasn't meant for the weak. It calls for great bravery and expert technique. All right, I think what we have here is, caution, this gig wasn't meant for the weak. Oh. It calls for great bravery and expert technique. Sounds pretty consistent. My quick sneaky style will make lunchtime a breeze. Then we have a little variation here. Set on your mark. This is bro versus peas. So it would appear to be anapestic and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm going to go with one, two, three, four. Anapestic tetrameter as your dominant meter with some variation, which is totally fine. Anapestic tetrameter. That's what we've got going on here. The cargo is loaded. It's zip, zoom, and race. I'm speeding green peas to that squeaky clean face. Yes, I would say you are quite consistent. I didn't really stumble anywhere. I don't think you heard me stumble. Um, there were a couple of little things that I'm going to get to in a minute uh, that did make me pause. And like I said, we'll get to those in just a sec. So overall, I don't have a lot for you on meter. I think you're going at a good pace here. Uh, caution, this gig wasn't meant for the week. It caused, okay. First thing is the word great for me is not great. It's kind of like nice. What does it mean? I can't see it. Not that you can never use the word great, obviously, but this whole, it calls for great. I don't know. I think maybe think you could do something a little stronger there to get rid of great. Uh, if you just get rid of great, you only have one syllable to work with, so it's going to be kind of hard, I think. But if you maybe look at this first foot, it calls for great. You might come up with something a little bit more interesting there. An expert technique. My quick sneaky style 
will make lunchtime a breeze. So this brother, the big brother who is feeding the child, is already feeling pretty confident in this whole thing. And that's coming through with your word choices here. He's already got a style. Uh, he's feeling pretty good about himself. And he's ready to go. So set on your mark. At first, I wasn't sure about starting this line with a stressed beat and just leaving it as set, but I think it works. I think it's a good variation. It shows that he's he's ready, right? He's getting ready to go, so set. And the way that you've split up the lines too certainly works with the building of the tension and the drama. The cargo is loaded, really fun. It's zip, zoom, and race. Now, I do see that you are using zip, zoom, and blank in every stanza as a sort of refrain, a repeated thing. Repetition, of course, is always a wonderful thing. I don't know yet if I love the zip zoom every single time, uh, but I don't know what the rest of your stanzas are. We have speeding green peas, we've got a choo-choo train, we've got a speedboat. I don't know what other uh, types of things that the kid is inventing that in it, all of them can use zip and zoom. But so far, okay, I'm gonna go with it. I think I do like repetition of it and that you are changing up that last word. Cargo is loaded, it's zip, zoom, and race. It's, yeah, it's just that I don't love the it's. In the other stanzas, you've used a dash, and again, I would make sure that that's an M dash, huh? Because it just uh, gives you that correct pause. And maybe we need to do that here as well because it's it's what is it's uh, it doesn't make sense to me the cargo is loaded zip zoom and race yeah yeah i think you could i think you could totally get by with just the dash there so you've got that bit of pause for dramatic effect the cargo is loaded zip zoom and race and then he's off and running i'm speeding green peas that squeaky clean face i like your use of speeding here as a verb, speeding green peas. Uh, it's kind of a, an unusual usage, but I like it. I think it works. Um, blah, 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 blah. What's it going to say? Uh, with pedal to metal, I plead, open please. So here we have the choo choo train and the speedboat, but up here, the form of transportation is not <laughs> mentioned at all. We've got pedal to metal. So we've, for sure, you've got, it's, a, it's a race car of some sort, but it's not mentioned. So that's kind of weird to me that they're mentioned in the other in the other stanzas but not here here i just have to uh guess and uh, oh right here you just told me it's a race car but i didn't read these <laughs> i try not to read the art notes as i'm reading because it, it stops me and i want to just stay in in the rhythm um but now i've gone back it is a race car and two things if you're going to mention it in all the other stanzas i kind of want it mentioned here too I'm a little bit of a stickler for consistency in various ways, so maybe that's just me. Uh, see, see what other people say, critique partners and whatnot. And also, does cargo, do race cars have cargo? I don't think they do. So the cargo doesn't really go with a race car for me. With a race car, I feel like we want more imagery like it's souped up. It's all ready to go. Cargo is more, again, a train, a truck, a semi. Uh, so the imagery isn't matching up for me there. Cargo is very heavy, where a race car is sleek and fast. So you might want to think about that a little bit. I'm speeding green peas, that squeaky clean face. I like all of your long E sounds here. You've got, you know, your assonance going on. Speeding green peas, squeaky clean. Uh, pedal to metal, so you've got your internal rhyme. And then you get, again, with the E's, plead and please. And you've got the plead please thing. Uh, open please. And I'm wondering if plead, even though I know you want probably want that for the alliteration and the assonance, but think about this. This kid is souped up, speeding that spoon towards that face, right? The pedal is to the metal. Who's got time for pleading when you're in a race car? You're just gonna do it. Remember, you just told us this kid is full of confidence in the first stanza. So where did that confidence go? I think it's too early for pleading. The pleading, I think, has to come later when this kid is absolutely not going to put up with the peas. Uh, so again, the pleading doesn't 
for me, doesn't go with the rest of the imagery here of the race car and with his confidence in that first attempt. And I think he does need to have that confidence in the first attempt. He's like, yeah, I've got this. So think about this word. What are you going to do with that? But roadblocks pop up and round one goes to peas. I really think it's, I really like this um, repetition also of your round one, round two goes to either bro or peas. I think it's pretty funny. And obviously the illustrator is going to have a good time with those images as well. I'm going to come back around in a minute to your art notes. Let's move on. All aboard choo choo train, zip zoom woo woo. Here the meter is a little wacky for me. Uh, we've got, but roadblocks pop up and round one goes to peas. All aboard choo choo train, zip zoom woo. We've lost it. We've lost, do you hear that? How we've lost it? I'm coming into this like the race car. I've already got that momentum going and then bah! I stop on this line because it's not consistent. But roadblocks pop up and round one goes to peas. All aboard, choo-choo train, zip, zoom, woo-woo. Something's missing. Something's missing. And also it's choo-choo. I mean, that's spondaic, meaning they're both stressed. Choo-choo. You, know, you can fit it into anapestic meter, but something everything has to be perfect here for that to happen. And also woo-woo isn't working for me because in these other ones, you see you've got this unstressed, unstressed before your last word. And here we don't have anything like that. We've got four big words here. So think about this line. How are we going to fix, get it to go into your tetrameter meter, your anapestic tetrameter meter? The car contains oodles of ick sticky goo. Now we're back. So it's really just this line. All right. What are we gonna do with that line? Now this is a challenge, let's see. I think the a main issue here is the all aboard. Starting with that is already throwing me off because this, this is how I, I read this. All, all aboard, choo, choo, train, zip, zoom, woo, woo. <laughs> That's a lot of stresses, all right? Lots of them, maybe one of the woos can be unstressed. It's just, I can't get into this line. What if it started with something like hop on? Do you need train? I mean, a choo-choo is a choo-choo. We know what a choo-choo is without having to have train in there as well. So that could free up a syllable for you. Or maybe it's instead of hop on, it's hop on the choo-choo train. Zip. Zoom, woo, woo. All right, let's, let's back up here for a second. Okay, with pedal to metal, I plead open please, but roadblocks pop up and round one goes to peas. Hop on the choo-choo train, zip, zoom, woo, woo. That's not working for me. What if it's something like hop up, on the choo-choo train, zip, zoom, woo, woo. Hop, okay. But roadblocks pop up and round one goes to peas. Hop up on the choo-choo train, zip, zoom, woo, woo. Hop up on the choo-choo train, zip, zoom, woo, woo. Okay, something like that. I don't love it because I don't love the up on the, it's filler. So top of my head, but it has to go somewhere in that direction. So either try to something where you get rid of train or figure out a way to change this hop up on to something more interesting, but that's the direction you have to go. The rest works. The car contains oodles of ick sticky goo. This ick sticky did make me stick <laughs> a little bit. Uh, I stumbled on this actually when I read it before making this video uh, because I wanted to say the car contains oodles of sticky ick goo. I wanted the sticky to come first or the e, the icky, the, the, the two syllable word. I wanted that one to come first. The car contains oodles of icky stick goo. You know what I mean? It just comes more naturally to me. The car contains oodles of ick sticky goo. I found that difficult. Could just be me. So 
either way the, the meter works because you know it's six of one half dozen of the other for me it's a little tongue twistery here the trip is all twisty and jiggly oh no Alrighty now now it's time to go to your rhyming dictionaries and find some other rhymes for bro because this line is too fillery first you've got all hmm and then you've got oh no which i think is just filler i think you can do better on this line all twisty find me a bit a better word a three syllable word so you don't have to say all twisty you know it's jiggly that's fine uh but wait a minute how can it be jiggly the car contains oodles of ick sticky goo okay so the peas are jiggly or are they drippy what are peas exactly they're mushed peas right i don't know if mushed peas are jiggly so check out that word and see if there's something that might describe mushed peas a little better uh, but this whole twisty thing is fine, but I want, again, a longer word that gets rid of the all. And check out what rhymes you can get for bro that are not oh no. All right, I'm being hard on you, Cindy. I keep it on track and round two goes to bro. Here, very nice, keeping with the railroad imagery. Make sure you go through every single stanza, fine-toothed comb, and make sure all of your word choices are matching whatever it is, either the race car, the train, the speedboat, the donkey caravan, whatever it is that this kid uses to get the peas to the face. Make sure all the word choices feed into that same image, okay? So it'll just make all of your images that much stronger if they, all the words are working to build that one big image, okay? All right, so let's get to your last one here. A speedboat is mega fast. Zip, zoom, and splash. I'm aiming beneath that ish squishy green stash. The baby thwacks back with Tai Chi expertise. She won't open up, and round three goes to peas. All right, I have a couple of things in here. Again, that could just be me. I'm having the same issue with the ish squishy. It's fun, but I have a hard time saying it. I'm aiming beneath that ish squishy green stash. I have a hard time with that. So anyways, think about it a little bit. Uh, also, if it's a mustache we're talking about, I believe that you need to do that and use the other backwards apostrophe there. The baby thwacks back with Tai Chi expertise. So once again, you've got your internal rhyme going on, your thwacks, your back. I see you've spent a lot of time looking at your word choices. It's very apparent and you're doing a really, really good job with that. I am missing a little bit more imagery. Like the other ones have, you know, other imagery in them that relate to whatever it is that he's pretending to be. And this one doesn't. Aiming, maybe it's in the word aiming, you can find something uh, driving toward or, you know, whatever it is a speedboat does. So instead of aiming beneath, which I'm not loving that phrase, maybe you can find some sort of speedboaty words in there that you can use instead. And that would kind of wrap up uh, the image a little better. And the baby thwacks back. Now the thwacking back, because Tai Chi is a very calm and slow art, right? It's not Taekwondo and it's not Karate. So I don't think that it goes with the thwacking. So that's something also to look at. Isn't it annoying? Am I annoying you yet? You really do have to look at every single thing to see if does this make sense? I mean, honestly, it, at first I said, oh, this this um, this stanza is working very well. And then I immediately right after gave you two things that weren't working for me. <laughs> I'm always finding something, always finding something. All right, I'm going to end yours, Cindy, with just taking a really quick look at your art notes. Uh, again, it has nothing to do with lyrical language, but I figured as long as we're here, they came to my attention. And I'm going to put a link in the description below to a blog post by Tara Lazar in which she's she writes about how she handles art notes. For me, it was a revelation. 
it has helped me even in figuring out my page turns and everything else and my pacing. Uh, she just has a really simple but effective way to use art notes. In a nutshell, it's really about, uh, first of all, not putting art colon, setting them apart in a different way, and only putting in the bare minimum of what's needed so that the reader, because in this case, the illustrator doesn't need your art notes. I think it's more for the reader at this point. Uh, and just giving the bare minimum, okay, like spoon is race car, or spoon equals race car. I try to do like the tiniest, tiniest little art notes I possibly can and only where necessary. And this doesn't, you know, it doesn't mess up the flow and it just gives you, and here, for example, but roadblocks pop up and Ron goes, do we even need this one? Baby blocks the spoon. We have a roadblock. I can kind of figure it out. But okay, you could leave it. Uh, baby's face covered in peas. I don't think you need this. Round one goes to peas. It's just, it's getting in, in the way of my reading of this, basically. Uh, because I can, ex I can totally understand what's happening here. I've had babies. <laughs> I get the peas. So, all right. Overall, I think you are in a really good spot. I've given you some things to work on, some very specific things. I hope that you found this useful and that you continue with this. I think it's a really fun concept. So well done and thank you for submitting. And that's it for Peek and Critique for this week. I do hope that you found it helpful and that you found something that you can apply to your own writing as well. Again, if you find this content useful, do hit that subscribe button and we'll see you here next week.